it's time for Five Minute Fridays. We're going to be talking about the voices inside our heads. No, not the ones telling you to burn things. Uh, Those voices are real troublemakers. We're going to be talking about the voices that you listen to when you make decisions. Yesterday, I was talking to Jeff Shapiro. He's a paraglider, rock climber, base jumper, wingsuit athlete, very extreme sports professional. And he has to mitigate risk in the things that he does. And he's actually seen many of his friends and colleagues die from these dangerous activities. And so it's always in the presence of his mind about should he be listening to his intuition? Should he be listening to statistics and data? Should he be listening to his experience? Which voice is going to be the one that helps him reduce risk the best. And there's all kinds of different voices in our heads. And often we're listening to our rational mind instead of our intuition. And intuition is actually neurons in your gut, in your torso, around your stomach that process information, but they're not able to completely communicate it with your thinking mind. So you're actually, if you quote, listen to your gut, you're able to access better decision-making capabilities. Now, I have not always done this perfectly. I, I was married for 16 months a few years ago. Uh, this is largely because I didn't listen to my intuition. I was married and divorced very quickly. It actually was, was something that if I had listened to my intuition, I probably would not have gotten married in the first place. I was trying to make my partner, my ex, happy. I was trying to do the right thing by her, even though in in my own understanding, it didn't seem to be the right idea. But using my rational mind, the voice inside my head said, she deserves this because you've been dating for several years. And in hindsight, obviously, I ignored that voice. And and the whole, <laughs> the whole step of getting married and divorced could have been avoided. It's often very hard to tell who you should be listening to. And and we have these dreams, right? We have these dreams for ourselves and our careers and what our life is going to look like. The question is, whose dream is it really that you're living? And so when I was going to be a scientist, I had always had this dream of being an adventurer and explorer, and that's what I'm doing right now. And I also had this dream of being a scientist. Now, it turns out that the dream of being an explorer was my own, but the dream of being a scientist was actually an invisible script that I inherited from the world around me, from my teachers, from school, from society, telling me I was good at science and I should do things that I was good at, uh, all the way to looking at my dad and modeling my life after him. It's just a script that I wrote for myself, and it was running in the background, and it led me to make decisions to go into a PhD program when it was probably unlikely to be fulfilling of the dream of being an adventurer. And so it was a blend. I was following my own dream or trying to fit it in with this invisible script, someone else's dream that had worked its way into my programming. If you happen to check out this book I read recently by Charlemagne the God, it's called Black Privilege. It's a really amazing book. Uh, he is a well-known hip-hop radio DJ in America. And early on, his mentor told him he had just put out this really crappy rap album. And it was obvious that he wasn't going to be a good rapper. But that was his dream. All these young black kids from the hood in the South wanted to be rappers so they could get rich and get out of the, the gang life, out of drug life. And his mentor realized that Charlemagne was actually quite good behind the microphone as a radio DJ. He was really good at talking and commentary. And he told Charlemagne, he said, fuck your dreams if they aren't yours. It wasn't his dream to be a rapper. It was just a script, an invisible script running in the background that that was all he knew to aspire to. That or being a a pro athlete, a sports star. And when he realized he could be successful as a DJ, he knew that that was his true dream. And he, and he took that dream for himself. 
Now, it's really hard to avoid these invisible scripts. I know that I already have dreams for my nine-month-old son. I see he's got all these talents and innate abilities, and I hope that he gets to take advantage of them. But these are my dreams, my intentions for him, and they're probably going to get wired in there. But they're not his. They're from me. They're from society. And he'll have teachers and peers that encourage to do him to do things that he's good at. And he'll think he should do this or that. But really, he has to find his own dream because then he can listen to his own voices and not someone else's voice telling him, you should do this, you should do that. And there's all kinds of examples. I'll share a few of, of how we have these invisible scripts, these voices that control our decision making. So, you know, raise your hand if... Yeah, if you're driving, go ahead and uh, just raise one hand, please. <laughs> but raise your hand if you think you might have thought something like this. An invisible script. I have to go to graduate school to get a good job. People say, I'll be happy once I have more money. There's an invisible script in America that buying a home is a good investment. Now, these are not judgments. These are not saying whether it's good or bad. These are just an assumption that we are operating on based on the stories that we've inherited from, again, our families, cultures, friends. One of them that I hear often is, if I have kids, I need to settle down and stop traveling full time. So it's a, it's a very fine balance because there are great ideas. We see people write a book and we're like, ah, I love it. We see people do a painting or uh, start a business that we want to model our business after. And in the book, Steal Like an Artist, Austin Kleon says, please steal these ideas from other people and then make them your own. And we just have to be very careful about when we take on other people's dreams and other people's intentions for us. And we're not listening to the voices inside of our head, our intuition that's telling us what's good for us and what's not good for us. So when you feel an icky feeling, when you feel discontent, when you feel confused, when something is too hard, if you try it again and again, it's not working. Those are all signs to pay attention to your intuition. And you can actually feel in your gut. You can actually say, what is the physical sensation that's happening in my belly right now? That is a component of intuition because we can't think of it in words. We have to feel it in feelings and physical sensations. Hopefully that will help you gain the superpower of adding to your decision-making capability, the big decisions in your life by listening to your intuition as well as your rationality, your informed decision-making, and help you get a clear understanding of what programming, what invisible scripts are running for you in the background that you might not even be aware of. If you found this episode useful, please share it with your friends. You can go and find the show notes for this episode at DerekLaddermilk.com slash Invisible Scripts. And I'd love to hear how this episode impacted you. Go ahead and comment on my latest Instagram post with what you got out of this episode. That is where Instagram is where I am responding almost every day to comments. So I'd love to see you and interact with you over there. And it will help determine which of these topics we want to explore even more, more deeply, more furtherer, to put it in good English, in future 5-Minute Friday episodes. Thanks so much for listening today. Now it's your turn to go out there and